All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. This is Rich Gay from uh, Missing Movies. And today we have as our guests Larry Blake, uh, who works extensively in uh, digital preservation and restoration. Uh, and uh, we're going to have, hopefully, uh, you know, an enlightening conversation here about uh, about where we are and uh, how we can help to preserve and restore films in the future. So without further ado, Larry, I'm just going to ask you to explain a little bit of the work you are you are doing in the area of preservation or preservation and restoration. Yeah, um, thanks, Rich. Um, I my, my day job and my primary job is I, I supervise post-production sound for motion pictures and documentaries and TV shows. Um, that's my that's my putative job. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, because of my connection with Steven Soderbergh, I've supervised the sound on 33 of his movies and four television seasons. Um, and I've also his sort of informal archivist. Mm -hmm. um, I have been deeply involved and, and involved right and am involved right now with the restoration of seven of his movies whose rights have reverted to him. And we can talk about that issue, which I know is one of your key mm -hmm. um, points at Missing Movies. Um, I've also been involved in restoring through movie studios um, about um, probably 15 of his movies and probably about 10 other movies unrelated to Steven. Uh, I've done, for example, four movies for Victor Nunez, who's a good mm. buddy of mine, mm -hmm. and stored his movies going back to uh, Gal Youngin, Flash of Green, uh, Ruby in Paradise, I'm really proud of. And um, so I've been involved primarily with making movies contemporaneously, but also going back to movies that I've either done before, like with Steven, or in the case of Victor, movies that other people had done. So um, I've seen the whole point of view, and I'm not just looking at it, of course, from the the uh, sound point of view, because mm -hmm. I'm my background is in filmmaking, filmmaking, and so exactly what happens with the image and all that is, you know, it's it's part of the equation. Right. Right. Okay. So when you as you approach these 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 restorations, uh, what what are some of the obstacles? What are the biggest obstacles you you run into on a technical side? Uh, well, um, you know, it, it it depends upon uh, you know. Obviously, there's the issue of finding materials and um, um, uh, you know getting a getting a transfer done. But I, I don't really consider those obstacles. I mean, the biggest obstacle we had with the movies whose rights have reverted to Stephen was with the movie Full Frontal that he did in uh, 2002 for Miramax and mm -hmm. the rights of to Stephen 20 years later and couldn't find a camera negative. I mean, wow, it was just not found. And uh, so I kept digging and I kept digging. And then it was like one little mention in one Excel sheet at Photochem wow. led to one little mention in one Excel sheet uh, with a post-production executive at Disney, which led to the proverbial Razor Lost Ark Citizen Kane warehouse where the camera negative was. Wow. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I mean, the, the, these stories are, are that's, you know, as, uh, as uh, the TV show, uh, The Naked City, it's, it's there are a million stories. And yeah, yeah. This is just one of them. Yeah. Um, and that was the only time, other than that, uh, we, we, we have been... Uh, Stephen and I like the sound elements since since the since the get go since text size and videotape mm -hmm. which we've restored times most recently five years ago for Criterion. Um, uh, I've always kept all the sound elements be they and they were usually in a form of multi track tape, and wow. we've had all the migrated over to file. So that's not been an issue. So the issues of the act of restoring are not mm -hmm. are not the things and 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 i i think that there are two big things that people need to be aware of one is your primary mission which i think is fantastic which mm -hmm. is contractual stuff and getting getting that show in order because that is something where like the technical stuff 
where people, you know, the, the biggest problem is people assume too much, be it right. technical or contractual. They just assume it's always going to be there. Yep. Um, and uh, so what, what y'all are doing, I think, is tremendous because that, that's certainly an underserved thing. The other thing is is the act of digital archiving itself is um, something which has been uh, the subject of many canards mm. and pr pretty much patient zero in this epidemic mm -hmm. is the Academy's paper, The Digital Dilemma, which is without question the most quoted uh, publication ever in the history of movie archiving. It is right. really no competition. I mean, you have you have Anthony Sly's great book of nitrate. You've got Giovanna Fassati's wonderful books. You've got you know a lot of great books out there, but it has no competition. No competition to uh, and so far. If you just do a simple Google search about film archiving, and what's happened from that paper is that there is. Um, in the ether, it's it's like out there as a uh, received wisdom mm -hmm. that digital archiving doesn't work. You have to constantly migrate. You have to constantly worry. It's very expensive, and all those things are not true. Mm. And it's it's sort of my mission, um, and this is me as a writer, mm -hmm. not as a filmmaker, a sound person, or a restoring person as a right. writer i'm writing a book which is titled solving the digital dilemma um okay. which goes into the the practical issues involved and they're not that complicated and there is no boogeyman out there um that awaits people there just well, isn't. i'm 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 fascinated to hear that you know it's, it's fascinating to hear that because i think a few things that you said ring very true to me number one is yes i was one of those producers uh my my wife's the director and we felt very much like we assumed that this material would be taken care of uh and there was no real I, you know it, it's just it's, there's there's no level of education about what steps we should take i mean obviously you guys were uh were way ahead of us i mean interestingly uh our first film, True Love, was at the same fest at Sundance oh, with I, Sex I quite and the And, and you I know, what's, remember. what's fascinating is that, you know, it's kind of interesting because we have two divergent paths. I mean, you guys knew enough even then to preserve and hold on to materials. And we we delivered our, our, our show and that was it. That was, you know, we were done with it. I mean, I, I did score a 35 print of the film that I later, uh, uh, you know, placed with UCLA Film Archive, but we, you know, we we went in different we went in different directions. Um, so so that rings very true. The assumptions uh, and and the lack of any contractual obligations on anybody's part to to advise us or for the, the lack of information really uh, it, it was it was a huge problem. The other thing that I like hearing is that it's not impossible. It's not ridiculously expensive. Uh, you know, I want to hear more about this in terms of the, the, the digital uh, preservation process. Uh, so maybe, maybe you can t t t talk a little bit. I know, I, you know, I, uh, about the, the overall topics in your book that, that you know, and, 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 yeah, like 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 uh, the famous uh, line in the movie uh, Doctor Strange Love, where um, General Buck Turgeson is faced with the idea that um, a general has gone crazy, and because of this, the whole world could end. Right, and he says, "I have to admit, the human element has failed us now." <laughs> and right. it's it, it that's that's really the thing with. Um, with digital archiving of movies let's, let's talk right now of if you're making one today right it's not the issue of whether or not lto works it just does full stop you know just does mm -hmm. yeah um it, that's not the issue it's not the they they, they the, the tapes you know the an lto 8 tape does mm -hmm. not have a restore by date on it right it just doesn't right um i mean i'm i'm the first movie I did, 
that I archived the mix as I did it. Well, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, I can't uh, really read the title. What is uh, it? Uh, yeah, sorry. It's it's out of sight. It's the oh, movie okay. out of okay. And Got here it. is the effect stem. And this tape restores to this day. Right. It literally in July is going to be 25 years old. Mm -hmm. And I periodically restored it as like a party trick. And uh -huh. uh, 25th anniversary, I'm going to restore it again. Now, I'm a little bit crazy. And I have two Mac 9600s and two DLT 3XT machines with the software. Mm. So I'm a little crazy. But right. the bottom line is, is that this thing is nowhere near, this DLT 3XT is nowhere near as reliable as this. Right. And current tape for example this is uses an lto8 deck look nothing right. really special Put right, this right, into right. A mini and you're golden it doesn't require any special software it doesn't require any special operating system and mm. so those need to be made clear because the, the the again the boogeyman is stated as you know computer changing well I'm not going to get into technical weeds, but if you write to tape using what's called LTFS, linear tape file system, I believe, mm -hmm. um, you, you, as long as you have the driver that allows the deck to talk to your computer, it doesn't care whether this thing is connected to a Linux machine, Windows, or Mac. Does it doesn't know or doesn't care. Right. And so right. this is archivally toxic. This has to have a Mac, a Mac Pro. Um, excuse me. Um, um, a power PC Mac. Okay. It has to have an extinct piece of software. It has to have decks that are were no longer made in in the year two thousand. Right. So you know, but so that's what I'm saying is this is a worst case situation and it works. This here, there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these LTO eight decks sold every year. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not. It's not going to disappear. And the, the media itself has improved incrementally over the years. And right. so anyway. Now, now that let, first that first LTO that you, you uh, from out of sight, that's an, uh, what is that? That's LTO? No, no, this is not LTO. This is called DLT 3XT. Oh, D oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. This is before. Th th this was something from the 90s. Okay. Um, and um, LTO format began. Uh, in the year 2000, it's it's actually okay. a, a consortium of companies. Gotcha. And the uh, it's you know people should look it up and it's right. a it's a great thing. I mean it 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 leads the world of data archiving. It's just a big dog and it's not going away. And and mm -hmm. one point I'm going to make going forward about what people should do is they should in addition to having multiple sets. Uh, Again, I'm a little crazy. For so for Steven's movies, we make four sets of everything. Okay. Um, and it's really not that expensive. Um, in addition to having multiple sets geographically separated in the best tradition of movie archiving, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's essential that people use the cloud too. Uh, now I know that's sort of a, a broad subject, right. but the thing is, is 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 that with the the coldest data storage tiers in Google and Amazon and Microsoft, um, they're, it's costing you essentially $1 per terabyte per month. Bottom line is, mm -hmm. if you have a complete set of data for a movie, maybe it will come to, if you have full 4K image sequences, it might come to 20, 30, 40 terabytes. Mm -hmm. Well, math, that's $40 a month, that's $500 a year. Right. That's not a lot of money. No. You want to, you want to store film cans at Protec Vault? Yeah. Yeah. Probably gonna be the same. And 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 understand too that the cloud specifically means with respect to on the cold tiers of all the storage companies, mm -hmm. um, it means they're putting them on tape. They, they don't tell you that. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, Google and Microsoft um tell you that they do. They do. Okay. Amazon is like getting news out to Kremlin. You, you who right. knows what they do, right. but 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 the knowledge in the industry is that they absolutely do. So when you go to their um, uh, uh, deep archive, mm -hmm. um, um, it's called 
Glacier Deep, uh, I think is what they call it. Um, okay. And or no, it's it, whatever it's called. It, it, it's it's uh, it's sort of it doesn't fall off the tongue easily. Right. But Glacier Glacier Deep, um, basically, it's like Google. It's dollar per terabyte per month. And right. Google is Google's different because Google keeps it on on spinning drives, like spinning drives. It's all sure. what's all sharded in a, in a data center. Right. Um, right. Google says you have millisecond access for for Glacier Deep. Uh, they say it can be up to 48 hours, which is not an issue. I mean, if you're vaulting yeah. your thing away by the time you get in touch with exactly vault, pull it out of storage, you know, right, right. So, so the point is, is that 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 means that everybody knows that Amazon is backing it up to tape. Gotcha. So I think there's no question that people should um, uh, be using both. You know, you want okay. to hold something in hand right. and you want to have something that the migration is completely not your, not your problem. Now, when you store, you say that's in four geographic, different geographic locations, what what types of locations? I mean, uh, it doesn't it, really matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. really matter. I mean, as long as you, you know, I have one set. Uh, one of the, our locations is a storage vault that I have here in New Orleans is a climate controlled vault, but there's no, there's no special mm -hmm. thing for it. You know, right. as long as it's not getting too hot, too humid. Right. I, you're you're fine. Right. Uh, I mean, again, this tape has been stored not in any precious way. It's been handled for a quarter of a century. And I can't wait in July, the 25th anniversary. Right. So restore, you know, right. um, you should, you should, one thing you should not do is always store them in like, uh, there's a company turtle that makes cases for, for LTO tapes and they're cushioned because gotcha. dropping a tape is not good. Not good. Um, okay. Okay. So, um, but you know, so, so it, Prior to the act of putting it on tape, mm -hmm. again, go, going to Buck, Buck Turgidson's, uh, um, uh confession, okay. um, is, is that you have to organize everything properly. Is mm -hmm. that you have to name stuff consistently. You have to, uh, you know, you have to think of the three, well, let's, it's four food groups, right? Okay. You've got the image, you've got the sound, You've got subtitles. Let's not forget those things. Mm -hmm. And you have documentation and your mission of contractual things. Right. And so all of those things are are crucial. And you cannot um, you cannot forget any one of them. Right. Um, and that's that's sort of one of the problems. Again, going back to the digital dilemma and going back to when people fetishize and which is no there's no other word mm -hmm. to fetishize right film i mean it, it, it it's it's a fetish it it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make any sense and whenever i talk to people said fetishist <laughs> i will say okay so you think black and white separations is going is going to preserve your movie for the next hundred years right i've got two questions for you what does that have to do with sound right right and then there's silence. Okay. You just hear a pin drop. It's like, right. right, okay. So what are you gonna do for sound? Don't tell me mag because that's crazy. Don't tell me optical because that's that's crazy. So right. what are you gonna do? And then well, I'll have to get back to you about that. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are getting back to me. Let me, let me just <laughs> um right. and and then the other thing is there's this sense of um with film. The, and things analog that there's this um, mythical sense that it's simple and you can always restore it. You know, like right. you sent off in the Voyager, the, the disc of record, right. um, you can always restore it. And like, no, that's just not true. Mm. I mean, you can shine a flashlight through it. If I hear that one more time, <laughs> I'm going to go crazy. You can shine a flashlight through it. Yeah, that's great. You got a 4K <laughs> Can registered flashlight? Wow, <laughs> makes that. You know, it's right. it's so uh, all the all that fetishization ignores that you know there is to to take something of an analog nature, be it image on film or sound on mag or optical, mm -hmm. um, 
takes a great degree of spidey sense, uh, not even spidey sense. It takes a great degree of experience that then right. gives one a spidey sense. I mean, my right. my buddy Nick Berg at Endpoint Audio in um, in Burbank, Nick is to me is the uh, you know the LeBron James, the Michael Jordan, the goat of of that field, uh -huh. and he he has the approach uh, that when he does something, this is the last time it's ever going to be touched because there's a there's a lot of his um, his uh, his machines and all. He is he does his best and he's keeping them up magnificently. But he knows that in 20, 30 years, and he's a fairly young guy, right. that there, so certain parts are not going to be available. Right. They're just not going to be available. People say, "Well, I can always make it." I know, like, no, you can't. It's like right. it's like one talk I gave on against the digital dilemma uh, in 2013 at the academy. Somebody stood up and went, "I can always build a projector." It's like, actually, no, you couldn't. Mm. You think because you know what what a, what a Maltese cross movement is mm -hmm. that you can build a projector? No, you can't. I right. mean, uh, the latest projector that is no longer made, but the latest great projector. Was a Kineton FP series. Mm -hmm. It's it's a computer with sprockets, right? You know, right? It's right. it's like that's why the Academy's got Academy AA twos because they're like tanks and they're less relying upon, you know, upon um, electronics. Stuff. Electro, right, right. You know, and and so the idea that you can always build it is just total bullshit, and right. people need to need to realize that. So, so, but for for your um, well, I wanted to ask you about the steps that. <clears throat> so, so let's go back because you've 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 said a lot of very really good things and a lot of good advice. I want to sort of lay it out. So, basically, the if I want physical copies, we're talking about the LTOs now. Do you it, how how expensive is it, and do you recommend? that someone get their own drive to that, that there be a drive on a show that, that can generate these LTOs or it, it, it depends. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's a couple of factors here. Let's assume, I mean, you can, sh whether you shoot film or shoot digitally, you're going to finish digitally unless you're right. Chris Nolan and Paul Thomas Sanderson. Right. Help me Jesus. Okay. So, so, um, uh, so that's, that's a given. You're going to finish your, 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 your image digitally. Right. Right, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, you'll finish your sound digitally, a hundred percent of the time, nine ninety nine, right, hundred percent right. of the time, you're going to finish it digitally. So then you end up with, you know, in the case of of the of the image, you will end up with a server at a at a facility, presumably. Mm -hmm. Um, you will then what you back up? Do you restore? Do you back up the the image sequences? Which is if it's four K, it's about 45 megabytes of file per, per frame. Um, and then you might have eight terabytes of that. Right. Okay, that's one way of doing it. And you should do that because that is truly archival proof. I mean, there's no, if you have an image sequence um, in either DPX, TIFF, or OpenEXR files, which are okay. only really the only three files that people use. If you have one of those three, mm -hmm. as as in one file per frame, right? It's you're, you're golden. You you will never you will never have a problem with it. However, you also need to make practical things. You must always make, unless you're a, a strictly TV TV thing. But if you have any theatrical uh, yearnings at all. You must make a DCP, and it must be unencrypted. That's that's just there's no okay. question about that. The studios are really fussy about that, but that's a whole separate subject. Right. And then you should make ProRes or interoperable master project. Um, the um, which is sort of like a, a, a it's nothing that you you use as a end user it's a mezzanine thing it's designed to make video outputs from it um okay. you can sort of like it's sort of like a, a buffet you can say it will give me the english track but with french subtitles and the high dynamic range version or whatever so an imp is a very powerful tool 
that people need to research. Um, but you should also make ProRes files, both standard HD 1920 by 1080, and then also the full-blown uh, 4K um, high dynamic range versions. You should make both. Now, of course, Apple owns um, right. the ProRes format. Right, right. And, you know, Apple could all of a sudden go, eh, we've got 10, 10 trillion dollars in a bank. We, uh, we don't care about this. Right. And it's very possible they would. That having been said and noted, uh, if you have a ProRes file, you're not going to have any problems going forward. There's no way. It's just too big to fail, as, as the saying goes. Okay. If, if, if you will be able to play back a ProRes file, someone will be able to ProRes, play back a ProRes file for many decades, irrespective of what Apple does. Okay. So, so you should get those three items. Then with sound, sound is really very small. It's just it's just basically, you know, a couple hundred gigabytes. Mm -hmm. um, your stems, your dialogue music effects masters. You need your print masters. You need your music and effects versions and things like that. It's very small and very simple. Okay. Um, the key thing is is to have all the stuff organized and named in a, in a consistent manner. I mean, what you know, what I do on my movies is I have the short title, uh, which is to say, like the project I'm working on now is called Full Circle. So I always write it. What's called Camel Case, capital F U L L, capital C I R C L E tight no space no underscores that's the short title mm -hmm. then an underscore and then i'll have snd for all of the sound elements i deliver so if you do a search for for anything there you'll you can see all the sound elements and then it goes then it follows from there got it, um, got it. and then but but the 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 problem going back to buck turgidson is that you have guys and gals in a machine room in the middle of the night who get creative with, with names. <laughs> right. And I, you know, I am like the Attila the Hun when it comes to that. I say, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to deny you your creativity, but do it exactly like this. Right. You know, it doesn't right. matter what you think you should do, what you normally do. Just do it exactly like this. Mm -hmm. And thus everything, you can do a search and everything will flow all the sound elements and similarly for the picture elements full circle underscore pix underscore and then it would be you know prores hq or right. Pro whatever it is with the um the resolution and the bit depth and the, the color space and so on and so forth got it got it okay um but back to that question this is this it you know it sounds simple enough but it's probably not something that a filmmaker should be doing individually. But do you, I mean, it, it feels to me because again, I'm, I'm less than technically oriented that it should be something that's, uh, that, that, that a post house does, but. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. yeah. 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 Ab absolutely. I mean, it, it just depends upon the size of, of your, of your movie, Rich. I mean, if you're doing anything where you, you have a facility, um, that is doing your DI, they mm -hmm. are probably set up to make, and you just need to specify that we want to have X copies because most facilities, you know, the extra cost of another set. And mind you, we, we, this is effectively um, 10 terabytes. That's yeah. a lot. of. That's a lot of that. Um, yeah. And, you know, 10 terabytes, what, what I do in, 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 in my movies with Steven, certainly, um, is that I, I do what I call a drive zero. And that basically is everything but image sequences. Because in 10 terabytes, you can fit all the subtitles, all the sound, including dub versions, mm -hmm. uh, all the all the, the documentation, including scripts, mm -hmm. including, um, of course, contractual stuff, music cue sheets, things right, like that. Right, right. Um, you can fit all that easily, uh, including an unencrypted DCP. You can fit, you know, the smaller um, ProRes files. So if you only had that one tape, of which there are four, and it's also in the cloud, let's not forget, yep. it's not one tape. 
it's four tapes plus a cloud and that itself is tapes, it's tapes. in multiple locations this it. is not just one tape in an amazon thing you know sure. they all have different ways of spreading things out um so but that one set we'll call it um that would get you pretty much anywhere you need to go the image sequences are really um they're the icing on the cake you know that they're 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 they're, they're not <clears throat> they're not absolutely essential but any smart archiving does have that gotcha you know gotcha. And, and so that needs to be done by to answer your question directly yes that should be done by df facility or or i know you spoke with my my dear colleague and, and friend linda Tadich. Yes. Um, or you go to a company like Linda's and th there are a few and hers is, is one of the best known where they can get the data from the facility and they will make the multiple sets and, and curate the data. Um, yeah. And so, you know, that's that's another way of doing it. But again, you have three or four. I mean, some mm -hmm. studios make two sets of things and it's like. It's like the old gunfighting maxim, you know, one is none and two is one, you know, right. and I can four to be three, right. you know, you, you have to allow for, to assume something is going to fail on you. But, but, <clears throat> but to repeat what I, what I spoke about earlier is the idea that these tapes are going to fail. People just need to jettison that from their brain. What what about the idea of uh, of now of of migrating those tapes down the road? I mean, is that you know? I don't I don't I don't think for if you're doing today, you should be using LTO eight, right? And those the formulas in those tapes, and the fact that you're writing it with LTFS, which is which is uh, operating system, and um, it just and software agnostic. If uh -huh. you have an LT8 deck, you have, by definition, you have LTFS. You just need to get a driver that allows to talk to the, your computer. Right, that's right, right. simple. Um, and so the fact that you have that means you're good. This tape, they, they spec it for 30 years. These tapes, the LT3 XT, I don't think it was a glimmer in anybody's eye that that right. any crazy guy in New Orleans would be restoring it 25 years later. Right. Um, right. But so the idea of, well, they change LT again, this is put forth in it's received wisdom out there mm -hmm. that, uh, well, they changed the, the, down there at LTO nine, which they are. Mm -hmm. uh, LTO eight is all we need for movies. That's all, you know, 10 terabytes per tape is a perfect sweet spot. Okay. Um, and um, they'll have LTO 10. The, 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 the path is now to generation 12. Okay, fine. Right. So <laughs> it, it doesn't mean that you get a Jim Phelps in, uh, in the credit sequence of uh, Mission Impossible. You know, yeah. they do not, they do not self-destruct. Right. Now, so, so then it's a question of, well, you've got, the the four sets of tapes i mean if you know this whole system including a mac mini and everything maybe cost me um i don't know what was it like seven thousand uh dollars -huh. you know the whole cost of it but you only need if, if you were a filmmaker right and you wanted to be looking after it yourself uh -huh. that investment will hold you for 10 years minimum minimum uh, right. you, you don't need to keep changing that. You just need to tell your people, I want you to back it up to LTO eight. And you go, well, you know, we have 12 now. It's like, do it to eight. Right. And it's going to last long enough. People to talk about things like on glass and on DNA. DNA, know, right. You know, right. Uh, yeah, synthetic DNA and all that. Wonderful, wonderful. I mean, that that's right. that's like, I've never kissed a girl, but I'm going to wait until I can marry Catherine Zeta Jones. Right. <laughs> well, maybe you should adjust, adjust you your know, right, 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 uh, right, a little bit. And it's, <clears throat> I, well, it's, well, it's the same thing. 
Yeah. One of the things that we're uh, advocating for and what we what we learned in some of our research is that the DGA did have a program uh, for 35 prints being deposited with UCLA Film Archive. And of course, the fact that no one's making 35 prints, I mean, that's sort of, you know, that, that program sort of fell by the wayside. We're trying to revive that and to make to turn it into something like this, where there would be an LT08 uh, or made for every film and a copy deposited. I mean, again, we go back to that thing you said, which I, I also think is very true, is this contractual obligation. If, if that obligation is there as a delivery item, then there's not a question of whether the movie can afford it or whether it should happen or not happen. It's an obligation that, you know, just like delivering the stems or delivering the cue sheets. I mean, uh, you know, if we can, we, we, we like, I'd like to, I think that's what I'd like to see happening to sort of standardize this process. It won't protect everything or everyone, obviously, if you're, if you're not in the DGA and you're making a film, uh, you're not, uh, you know, you're, you're not lining up with the, with the, the collective bargaining agreement, but I think it would be a very helpful uh, step step in the right direction sort of as you you know in that in that sense of you know let's let's do what we can do uh, well you know along those lines and let's now speak about movies where a filmmaker is making it on their own and there's no mm -hmm. studio that you own the intellectual property so you have to get get made and and get the uh, and maybe have your own lto8 deck let's talk about that situation um there, there's a Four hundred pound gorilla with a tutu in the middle of the room. Everybody ignores. I'll give you five seconds to tell me what it is. Uh oh, tell me. <laughs> the Library of Congress. Right, right. I've been to Culpeper, Virginia, where they have the National Audio Video Conservation Center, where all the recorded sound and motion picture holdings, when and uh, um, and really everything that's not a book or publication mm -hmm. or a piece of graphic images, uh, right. you know, photos is stored in Culpeper. And Greg Lukau and his staff there are just great people. And one thing that a lot of people don't know, and I know you know in your research, is there's a, there's a weird thing that's happened the past 20 years, and that is to submit something for copyright protection. Mm -hmm. You can give them a DVD. Yes, in fact, and, our film, and, and, yeah, our film was a, was a VHS was delivered and some films now are just delivered as MP4s. Um, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, yeah. So, and so people need to be a little more granular and to slice that concept much, much thinner. And that is to say is to um realize there's one thing which is the letter of the law and then there's the other thing which is what's best for you mm -hmm. and if you're an independent filmmaker and you can give greg and his team or give it through the copyright submission process but it's ultimately going to end up in culpepper you can give them an unencrypted dcp you give them an an imp or a prores HQ file, a ProRes um, HDR file. Uh -huh. you, you you can give them these things, and you know, spoiler alert, they're going to be around in two hundred years. Right. right, right. It's it's you know that 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 the, their their process. They have two data centers, which I don't know if they've switched from the uh, Oracle T10K format which is now obsolete i don't know if they switched to lto yet um mm -hmm. they will have some, i think because oracle no longer makes those machines but they have two data centers where they have stuff stored they also have everything in an amazon location too so um that stuff's going to be around forever and if you're talking strictly about preserving your movie full stop mm -hmm. then that is <laughs> As they say on the cover of Mad Magazine, Rich, what what does it say next to the price? Cheap. Cheap. <laughs> That's cheap. Right. Right. For, right. For you to give your movie to the li library as a, I think it's technically called the uh, copyright submission gift. Right. Uh, however, it's phrased. Right. And you know, don't just give them a DVD. 
give them an unencrypted DCP, give them the ProRes files or an IMP, what have you, and you're golden there. Mm. That, that, so, and so the issue of, <clears throat> you know, an LTO tape, well, you, you could do that, but I think it's better expressed really as the specific digital items that you would give them. Um, okay. And, you know, I know the DGA has also, I think, and correct me here, they also had something with respect to um, YCM separations at any point. Did at they? some point, yes, I think they did. Yeah, yeah. Which again, they they need to <clears throat> they need to uh, recalibrate things. But but you know, the, the there's just this fetishization of film. I'll say it again. I'll keep saying it. Right. That people right. need to get a, They need to get rid of it. They really right. need to move on from that. And to understand the, that that if you want to preserve something for the future, you've got to do it digitally, full stop. Mm -hmm. And 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 the, the word print, I think, is really dangerous, right? Mm. Because you grew up with them. That's the way you showed a movie. Sure, sure. Right, fine. Okay. But it's not the way you restore a movie unless it literally is the last thing you have. You want to scan from the camera negative or worst case, or best case, next best case would be an inter timed inner positive right. and so on and so forth um right. you don't want to scan from a print it's just you don't yeah. i mean yeah. that's the only thing you have and it's also not what you want to preserve because people don't walk through the logic of a print mm -hmm. and that is have a print you've got this one print right. <laughs> and the projectionist threads it up wrong one time Yep, it's a scratched print, right, right, right. It's, pretty much, so, uh, which happens to pretty much has happened to pretty much every print ever made. <laughs> if it was screened, oh, yeah. it's probably yeah. got a mark on it. It's probably got a yeah, an imperfections. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's why back in 2018, when they had the the uh, 50th anniversary of um, 2001, mm. and they were showing, uh, you, you know, Chris Nolan's unrestored version of uh 2001 with scratches you know right and, and some tears because it was a you know it was not the original negative it was from an ip an ip and I, in right and it had been just in dirt in the middle and it's like <clears throat> kubrick was out of his mind with respect to wanting sharpness and resolution yeah he yeah. was out of his mind he would literally have his own projectors at his own home steadied constantly because right. they weren't good enough for him his right. own projectors and so the idea that this image bouncing around on the screen is the way it was well yeah it's the way it was but right. it's like saying let's preserve the beatles with the emi lp which is the only way you could hear abbey road in 1969 it's like yeah but <laughs> let's go back to that master tape right uh it, you know because the whole thing of film fetishization is is the uh yeah first cousin of vinyl yep know? yep well this has been great i really appreciate uh all the info i i think the the practicality of this is going to be really helpful uh to everybody so you know i'm i just want to <laughs> you know do, do you have anything uh, that you want to close with uh, or well of course um, when it comes out and who knows exactly when that will be buy my book solving the digital yeah. dilemma yeah looking um, forward to that that that, that because that... The, the last part of the book is actually um, a I don't want to call it a workbook because that would be out of kind it's going to be a series of excel documents that you that that you'll be able to, to obtain um and it's basically a guide to how to back up and archive your movie the first four sections of the book will be a history of archiving a history mm -hmm. of digital archiving and case studies from steven's movie logan lucky which was the movie we did in 2017 mm -hmm. where we really started with the process we're doing now and then another part will be the restorations we're doing for all of his movies. That's great. Um, and so that will be a pretext to then, okay, now 
all that having been stated, right? What is the best way to um, what's the best way to archive stuff That's... and to lay things out in a very a very clear path because um, it's yeah. it's not tough and 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 <clears throat> too much is made of it and there's too many there's too much um, there's too many too many canards flying around there right and I'm available if anybody ever wants to contact me swell tone at aol s w e l l t o n e at okay. aol dot com just zap me an email and and uh, ask me a question because it's 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 not hard and it doesn't require you know it doesn't require great amounts of of uh, money outlay to do it properly right um, and again you know the act of just <clears throat> anybody who entertains the notion of going to film that's like 50 grand a pop just to get a negative in your hand yeah yeah and then <laughs> what do you have you have no sound you what do you do with that negative right your print right. you can't show the print anywhere and then so you got to scan it and effectively keep the point to be made here you're starting again yeah. all this data all these files the dcps the prores files the imps everything that you had made you'd have to start again yeah yeah um so right. so well, i'm just saying it is you know put your money put your money where it can be, be the most use and if you're if you're an independent filmmaker um uh you know it seems expensive you know um and i and i'm not saying it's cheap but you know, we go back to when we were starting, Rich, and think of how much money people spend on spent on sixteen millimeter film negative and prints. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Going to get to get stuff on any one project that you get this one investment, and then it's sixty bucks a tape, sixty right. bucks for ten terabytes. Right, right. You know. Well, that's great, yeah. and you know, with the I think the the book is going to definitely be something we're going to want to recommend because uh, you know that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make this uh, accessible. Uh, you know, the, the, the make the whole process be a little bit more because you know we think of preservation and we think of the silent films and the you know nitrate and all that, and it's actually I, I'm relieved to hear you talk about uh, you know the the work we're doing right now and how it's a lot easier than. You know, it's it's easier than that. It's cheaper, uh, and and it's uh, it's it, it's available to people. So, looking forward to the book. <laughs> Thank you so much. And again, I applaud uh, you and, uh, and and your team. And you know, I I introduced to you by uh, Dennis and Amy, yeah, <clears throat> and who've always done great work. And uh, I applaud you guys for doing for honing in on that one part of getting all the contractual stuff done because when we did logan lucky in in 2017 and 2018 um you know i'm good buddies with the uh stevens producer who's also our lawyer and mm -hmm. you know i was like you know ken you know get me these contracts i want to put them away on the on the archive you know mm -hmm. and, and it took some great convincing. Idea. but but it's like these things are are just crucial because again it's like you just assume things, and yeah. and last but not least, I'll say something that on on every within every section of what I write, I have a PDF file that's a readme file mm. right. that just explains what's there. It yep. explains this was our process in mixing the sound for this. We mix it five one. You should never up mix it to something called Atmos. You know, we have near field and theatrical masters. Uh, we have high dynamic range masters. Uh, it peaks at you know 700 nits or whatever. Yep. If you write this stuff out in English, all the things you assume, you know, you just have to. You, we have to assume that people in the future are not clairvoyant. Exactly. They have no that idea they can hold yeah. it, that they can you know mythically go. Ah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> ah, so I no. see a, a high dynamic range 7.1, you know, right. they're not clairvoyant. No. And so no. we, it, for us to, for us to write out, it takes like 10 freaking minutes to write out in English and then bake it as a PDF file yep. and to put it at the top level. And on the top level of our drive zeros is I have a PDF that says, read this file before thinking of doing anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, 
you yeah. know it's 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 uh if you get if you can you know cut buck turgeson off at the knees yeah and a the human error that's um, right you're, you're never going to uh to you know destroy the world as we know it exactly and maybe yeah and maybe you can at least preserve some piece of it <laughs> all right Larry, yeah. well thank you so much i'm gonna uh i'm gonna say bye for now and